Well, Fox Carolina is committed to you. Greenville County Council may soon look to find a fix when it comes to food deserts in the county. They're exactly what they sound like. Neighborhoods without access to fresh and affordable food. And right now, Councilman Enos Fant is proposing incentives for grocery stores to build in lower income neighborhoods. On the table, lesser application and permitting fees, a reduced zoning process, and property tax breaks. The Fant has told us the proposal must first go through the Finance Committee before the full council can take a vote. And for much more on this issue tonight, we sat down with Dr. Ken Cobb with Furman University. Dr. Cobb, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, just to kind of give the viewers at home a lowdown on exactly who you are and what you've done here. You are a community-based researcher. We know you're a professor at Furman, but also you are the author of Retail Inequality, which was a finalist for the James Beard Award, where you really focused in on food deserts, the cause of them, and the background, the backstory of them. So I want to go ahead and start off with a broad approach here for people at home. Why are we still in this issue? Why do we still have food deserts? right here in modern day in 2024. Yeah, well, it's interesting that you say it because in uh, next year in 2025 will be the 30 year anniversary of the, the term food desert. It was actually coined in Scotland in 1995. Um, and it came over here, big part of the US political debates in the 2010s. Um, and we're still dealing with it largely because the grocery store business is a really hard business. <laughs> the, the margins are super thin. Uh, and the economic conditions need to be right for stores to move in and to be able to stay in. And so uh, there have been a lot of initiatives in the past 10, 15 years to try and incentivize stores to move into areas where they are not, or maybe they, they moved out long ago. Um, but it's a steep climb because you need a certain amount of people need, that make a certain amount of money to be able to sustain supermarkets on their own terms. And we can go ahead and bring in a map here from the reinvestment fund. It's looking at limited supermarket access. And this is used by local and federal policymakers able to kind of see exactly what is in play in their communities. So we're looking at the Greenville area. When you look at these different colors in this map, what is your biggest takeaway? Well, when people have to travel far for a grocery store shop, uh, they know it. And so you, you know it when you see it, but this is this map offers a, a data tool to quantify people's relationship to their food environment. And so it relies on locations of supermarket businesses. We know all those addresses because they have to register their businesses. And we have census data on uh, where people live, how much money they make, uh, and we can calculate how far they have to travel. We can also include in that calculation whether or not they have access to a vehicle, because that makes it particularly tough. Uh, to get to the store on foot, if it's more than a half mile away, becomes really quite difficult, especially for folks with mobility problems. And so what local leaders can use is they can overlay their own public transportation system, like the GreenLink system, and identify areas where the buses don't go. And if you have low access supermarket areas or low access um, to healthy food options, then it gets really tough for people to be able to afford to buy healthy food. Now, we need to remember that healthy food costs more per calorie than unhealthy food. And so if you live closer to unhealthy food, uh, you save time and money because you don't have to travel farther away to buy more expensive items that even though they may be healthier, those extra expenses cut into your food budget. And for folks who are living just around the ability to make ends meet, an extra mile of travel can really cut into that food budget and then lead to instances of food insecurity, which is uh, basically what we call hunger today, people's inability to pay for all of their food throughout the month. And I think lastly here, the big reason why we're having this conversation proposal now from Councilman Ennis Fant, where he, he's hoping to offer incentives to get grocery stores into some of these communities where he's offering possibly lesser application permitting fees property tax breaks. So that sounds decent on the surface to bring these grocery stores in. How can we make sure that they stay? Well, the um, the tactic or the strategy to incentivize stores to come in uh, to where they previously were enclosed or where they haven't located in a long time um, has been in use in the United States for about 15 years now. Um, it can either be through grants and subsidies or some form of tax abatement. Uh, just a panoply of different uh, incentive tools to, to get them to come. But to get them to come and get them to stay are two different things. Now, remember, uh, in Spartanburg, we incentivized a Piggly Wiggly to come, and it wasn't able to sustain its business for very long. Now, the reasons for that are debated, um, but 
in the long run, for communities to be able to sustain and support a grocery store, uh, though there needs to be incentives into the people and the customers who live around those stores. They need jobs, they need education, they need training, they need transportation to get the jobs, they need child care so that they can keep those jobs on a steady schedule. Uh, eventually their incomes will rise and they'll be able to be customers that can support businesses on their own terms and those stores will no longer need those types of incentives. And so then we can have a thriving kind of balanced approach to investing in place in the stores and in people who live around them. Now, about finding that balance. So Dr. Cobb, thank you so much. I feel like this is just the beginning of our conversation. And so we appreciate your time and uh, look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much. Thank you. And now.